Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of Tabletop Stories. Set in the world of Bonsarel, we gather together and improvise an audio drama for you, so follow along. This epic fantasy is a world full of gods and monsters, and we play as ordinary heroes who delve into adventure, danger, and magic. The cast is a group of friends, all gathered around the table, rolling dice and telling a story. Sojourn with us and let your imagination wander into the world of Bonsarel. And so for now, our story continues. With each of you coded, the acid rain billowing in the distance, starting to pour down. As your feet step on the cratered plains, you now know why it is called the Crater Plains, because it looks like pockmarks of meteorites smashed into these plains long ago. You can guess maybe it was Mulgren's breath. Maybe it was portals into the abyss. Maybe it is strange demonic footprints that stomped through this land, leaving holes. As you move back and forth around them, between them, and around the craters, you notice that there are usually little bubbling pools of oozy purple liquid, burping and billowing and bubbling from the center of these craters. As each of you pass by, you see the clouds billowing in the distance. The howling of demons has ceased so far, Dagonia, as the four of you press on through this horrid landscape. But as you walk by these craters, taking a passing glance into this strange purple liquid at the bottom of these craters, small little images of men and women start to form from the bubbling liquid of the creator, and they issue out a beckoning hand, calling after each of you. Tagonia, join us. Kazuka, the water's just fine. Brother Dogoth, there's no better righteous fervor than joining us here at the bottom of the crater. You would not want to be destroyed by firewater desolation. Join us in safety. And Juan, you hear the strange burbling of your own native tongue. These frog people start to stand up in the craters, or at least what you think of them. They start to ribbit and croak calling after you promise safety from firewater desolation. Each of you are tempted to stop what you're doing, drop your items, and move towards these nauseatingly illusions, enchanting you into the pits of burbling purple liquid. I need each of you to describe to me, as these visions and illusions start to pass through your mind, you have one chance to do something before you are beckoned to join these foul beings in the bottom of this crater. Let us begin with Brother Dogoth. I am going to take, I'm basically going to to cover my ears and start praying, you know, in my head. So, trying to drown them out. Brother Dogoth, you place your hands upon your ears, trying to drown it out very good. Um, to resist, you will make some kind of prayer check if you have that skill. Dugonia. I do have prayer skill. Good, good. Save it for now. I'll tell you the target in a minute. Dagonia, how are you preparing to resist this illusion, this enchantment? I want to talk to Juan. It's like, what's going on? I mean, she knows more. I'm, you know more than us. I mean, you should help us. I, you know, this is something not right here. I, you know, I, I want to find these things. I'm not going to just give in. So please tell me what's going on here. Can you understand them? So... This is not a time for fighting. This is a time for fleeing. This is not a I know, time to be brave. But, uh, yeah, but we have to do something. And I'm not just going to stand here and cover my ears like Brother Tuga. I, you know, I'm a fighter. I need to figure out. But there's a time for bravery and there's a time for getting the out of here, Juan. Okay, so let, let's just get out of here then. I'm not gonna, I don't want to die. Dagonia, you just start running as fast as you can to escape this horrid situation before Juan can even respond. With that being said, Juan, how do you defend yourself against these illusions and enchantments? So I am fairly small and I happen to have a fish hook and a string. And I know it's a long shot, 
but I don't I don't trust these things. And so I take the I take the fish hook and I hook it on to like are there any roots or anything nearby that I can yes. kind of catch it on? Yes. Um and then I'm going to um tie the other end of it give myself quite a bit of length and then tie the rest around my waist um and and then I'm going to to call out my my brothers and I'm I'm speaking common as I say this my my brothers will you truly allow me to return may may I finally feel your embrace again once more that is very clever one uh you will use any skill that you deem appropriate um, otherwise, you will use intelligence. Kazuka, how do you respond to these illusions and enchantments? Uh, through my occult study. Mm. Um, my occult study tells me that this is abnormal. Uh, a, a presence of maybe not so much demonic, but evil energy. And so I can actually speak insults to them. If I so dare, but I think that's going to challenge my inertia. Um, so, but I think my intelligence, although not, not modified, will allow me to dismiss, I guess is the word I'm looking for, dismiss their seductiveness and their call to me. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, absolutely. Kazuka, you can roll a cult if you have it, or intelligence, whichever is higher. Each of you must now roll a d20 nine or higher, or you will succumb to the temptation and throw yourself into the crater. 18. 12. Success. Dagonia. Seven. Fail. Kazuka. A natural 20. Oh, here's a point. Can can I unhook the fish hook from the roots and and try to secure it into Dagonia's clothing, and and try to pull pull her away from the crater? Oh, I love it, Dagonia. As you just move into flight or fight or freeze, you just choose fight and you start running through as fast as you can, trying to outrun these maddening, sickening cries of illusion. And what ends up happening in your fury? You actually run right into a crater. Your feet stop short as your toes go over the edge and your arms fly out trying to catch yourself in balance. And at the last moment, Juan starts lassoing the hook around her head like a lasso. Juan, you let it loose. You're going to need to get a dexterity check nine or higher to catch Dagonia or she falls into the crater. All right. As 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 I'm doing this, I'm, I'm calling out, help me, friends. Uh, 14. 14 is a success, Dagonia. You feel your clothing goes tight, and Juan, your heels start dragging on the desert floor as Dagonia's much larger body starts to pull against your own weight, and you are at risk for falling in with her. You now need to roll a three or higher on a d4. Three. You are doing just fine, Juan. You just barrel down with resilient strength, and you hold Dagonia safe. Dagonia, you are still under this enchantment unless something changes. Uh, you still see it is the face of your family calling forth from these bubbling purple oozy liquid at the bottom of this crater. It seems like all your friends are keeping you from joining your family at the bottom of this pit. And now this frog has attached a hook to your back. Kazuka, you can see Dagonia is still under the enchantment. How do you respond? How close am I on to her? Yeah, within a move, you could get to her. Easy enough. Okay, that's good. So, running, jumping, tackling, out of the, you know, out of the crater. There's no way. All right, you're going to do a strength check, nine or higher. If you fail, you start to succumb to the madness as you've given sacrifice. I rolled a 20. How often do I roll 20s and not get benefit from that? Two. A two. Luck. I get a luck. You may reroll luck. luck. I need a nine. You jump towards the crater. You tackle Dagonia. 20. I get it again. Dang Another luck. natural and, 20. Okay. And this I, I usually roll ones. Take it. All right. Take it away, Kazuka. Not only do you withstand the illusion, but you actually slap Dagonia out of her enchantment as well. How does this occur? Probably not very gently because I'm hurtling and jumping and tackling. 
Uh, did I get that hook stuck in me? Because there's a hook somewhere. Not with the 20. <laughs> Just <laughs> making sure. Because that was going to hurt. And then we, of course, land on the ground. I say, are you okay? Digonia, are you okay? Yeah, I, I'm feeling a bit better, but I'm still what very dizzy. What was going dizzy. on with you? I know, I, I saw that my family is there. My family is calling. I wanted to go to them. I... <laughs> You know, I, I just needed them and I wanted to be close to them and I didn't want you to save me. I just wanted to be with them. It was hard. That was thank you for your... rescuing me. You're safe now. On. Here's your, uh, your rope back. Thank you. I just kind the of Brother Dogoth was facing ahead in the direction they were going and he turns around and he had no idea what was happening. He Brother just sees the chaos everywhere. Brother Dogoth, you start to see that uh, there is a petrified forest in sight. It is only a two-hour walk away, which means, Kazuka, your liquid, protective liquid, is might wear off in time. You start to see the acid rain is starting to billow over you and pouring down. Each of you must, like Dagonia said, make haste and run as fast as you can to the ruins of the petrified forest in order to escape the acid rain. Unless you completely run as fast as you can in this dangerous land of craters and ravines, unless you do something else, you're all gonna roll strength checks. But how do you respond to this, Kazuka, knowing that you only have an hour left? Call upon my angelic god. How do you do so? Tell me what you do and I'll tell you how to roll. Um, I have an angelic guide that gives me wisdom and intelligence when I call upon it. I have to use certain words. Um, I'm looking, I don't think I brought my book with me, however. Um, so I'm thinking of the words, I can't think of them right now, but the words call upon my angelic guide to give me intuition. Uh, and that intuition allows me to understand the shortest path from here to where I need to go. Kazuka, as you begin to sing out to Mylon, also known as Melil, the god of poetry and song, um, you begin to hum a tune and start running as fast as you can to outpace the acid rain. Only time will tell that if your god comes through for you. Dagonia, how do you respond to this acid rain? I just, I just, we have to be quick. I mean, we have to, we have to get some protection. We're not going to survive if this happens. And, um, you know, this, um, let's just be so quick. I'm athletic, so I can, you know, just let's push these guys and let's go. Let's run. Let's be quick. Come on, come on, Kazuka. Come on, brother. Duga. We, we need to do something. We can just like stand around here. Let's be quick. Juan, we'll go to you. Juan, you see that the rain's clouds are billowing and getting ready to pour down with petrified forest in sight. How do you well, respond? I rolled a two, so I am feeling my skin. I'm feeling these little prickles, like, like you know, when your foot falls asleep or whatever. And so I know that there's you know, probably not a lot of time left for me here. And so I, I run over and I grab the leaf that I came in with, and I and I shove the stem down in 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 the back of my robe, and I drop to all fours and I start frog leaping as fast as I can. Awesome. <laughs> and Brother Dogoth, everyone looks like they're running as fast as they can to get to the ruins. How are you responding? I'm, of course, following. I'm not the fastest runner, but I have endurance, so. Okay. I'm running as fast as I can. But I know that I should have protection. You should have protection indeed. In fact, it's, it's going to be a good two-hour run to get all the way to the ruins. Everyone is going to have to roll a skill check. It can be strength or your favored skill. Uh, Kazuka, you are being going to be rolling a prayer check or some kind of uh, and, uh, any kind of like casting check. So 12 or higher, please. Uh, my angelic guide modifier is plus three. Yes, go ahead. Yep. Wow, well, eight plus three is 11. Mm. Gagonia, what did you get? I can't believe this. It's seven. It's like 
again. All right, Brother Dugoth. Well, and that one <laughs> plus three is four. Okay, Brother Dogoth is in trouble. And Juan, what did you roll? Uh, I rolled a 10. Okay. So no one meets the mark, which means as everyone is running with all of their might, it is just impossible to dodge all the craters and the purple ooze. There is no straight path to the ruins and you find yourself scattering, moving all across this plains, trying to dodge the craters and get to the straight path to the ruins. And then during that time, the acid rain starts to fall, whether you're ready for it or not. During this first hour, it means Kazuka, you have no longer any more protection, which means everyone has lost one point, it means Guan, you have one point left. And uh, Brother Dogoth, you have four points left. And Dagonia, you have five points left or five hours left on the spray. Kazuka, you get splashed with the acid rain. As soon as it hits your body, you know that you're in for quite a surprise. Um, it is going to be 2d10 damage. Um, I'm going to roll for you. It's going to be really bad for Kazuka. All right. Kazuka, the acid starts to splash on top of you, and you take seven points of damage, which means as soon as the acid starts splashing onto you, the intensity is too much. Boils start to pop up on your skin. It starts to froth and froam, and sizzles of heat start to emanate from your body. The heat is too much, and you collapse to your knees down on the ground, unconscious and burning. Dagonia, Brother Dogoth Wan, you can see that in all this chaos and madness, none of you are together. Everyone is separated during this time. Dagonia, in this acid rain, I'm going to ask the Oracle, is a demon stalking you now? As I consult the Oracle, you know that a one, two, or three, it is true. And you got a two, which means yes, during this time, a demon is taking advantage of you. And there is one very large demon, looks like a gorilla, covered in armadillo scales, with large blades for arms and big green glowing eyes. He looks like a rock at this moment, and then you see his rock take form into arms and legs, and he lets out this bellowing roar. He looks like he's either going for Juan, Brother Dogoth, or you. Kazuka is fried on the ground and requires someone to go to him to bring help his way. You can still make it to the ruins. It's just going to take another dice roll, another hour of travel. So Dagonia, I'm going to leave it up to you. How are you going to respond? I don't want to leave everyone behind. I want to help them. I know I can find this beast. I'm good at it. You know, I have like four scars. I, I can fight. I have a knife. I can try to kill it. I can try to attack it. So let's, I'm just, just doing that. And yeah. So you have Kazuka on the ground. You have brother Dogoth and Juan, Juan yeah. on the ground. And then you have the demon. Which one are you going to do? I want to fight a demon. Go for it. Dagonia, you kick into action. You and the demon are well aware of each other, so there's no way that you are going to be surprised. you got to roll a alert check, a wisdom check on a d6 against me. You have to beat a five. It's six. It's a six. Six! Dagonia kicks into action, blade drawn, ready to draw first blood. Dagonia, you may make your attack against the demon. It's a big creature, nine or higher. Yeah. Entering combat. Dagonia has triggered combat with the demon by initiating the first attack. The demon is big, so she only needs to roll a nine or higher with her weapon attack. She gets a plus three bonus for her weapon skill, and she rolls a nine. But sadly, she only rolls a one on her damage. However, because she drew first blood, she now knows the demon only has nine hit points left. The demon retaliates with a swipe, Dagonia takes a defensive move by parrying with her knife, and she rolls a 17. She gets to add a d6 for damage and rolls a 2. For the first round, she is safe, and the demon is down 3 hit points. Brother Dogoth is next in the initiative. 
The monk runs over to Kazuka and places his cloak over the bard's body. He begins to pray to his goddess, Duvana of Mercy. He rolls a 10 on a prayer check and grants back three health back to Kazuka. As a rule, I allow my spellcasters to maintain concentration on their spells for the next round. This means next turn, they continue to cast a spell without needing to roll a d20. Brother Dogoth will only then need to roll a d10 to add to the healing points. The frog folk, Wan, hops around the craters on her way to safety of the ruins. She must use her entire turn to make it all the way. However, Wan sees Dagonia standing up against the demon, and so she decides to turn around and charge into the fight. With an arc of acid rain flinging off her body, she pivots and squats in the mud, wriggling her hindquarters, and makes an incredible leap. In midair, she croaks loudly, extends her tongue, and slaps it across the demon's face. She has to roll a nine or higher. Oh, no, she only rolls a five. This is really low. The demon sees her coming, grabs hold of her tongue, and pulls her into its body. They smack into each other, and both receiving one point of damage. The demon is down to six hit points. Round two. Dagonia realizes Juan just lost her oil and will not be able to make it back to the ruins in safety. Dagonia, however, has one point of oil left, so she has the ability to make it to the shelter on this turn. But she is concerned for Juan. So she rips off her cloak and scoops up the frog woman off the ground, covering her like a small child. She then bolts towards the ruined shelter. This will be difficult. She has to dodge out of the demon's way, pick up Juan, and make it to safety. So I'm ruling that she must roll a 15 or higher on a success. However, at that point, Kazuka interjects. He wishes to call out for blood and thunder. And this will grant a d6 to add for Dagonia's feet. He calls upon Mylon, the god of poetry and song, to aid the party. He must roll a prayer check, nine or higher. Rock music and angelic choruses echo throughout the cratered plains with peals of thunder amidst the acid rain. Kazuka rolls a 10 and is successful. Dagonia then rolls her check for her strength and she gets a 15 success. Even without the blood and thunder, she is empowered to pick up Juan, dodge the demon's swipe, and make it to the shelter just in time before both of their protective oils washes off their body. Back to the monk. Brother Dogoth's cloak burns in acidic flash, but he is maintaining his spell, so he gets to grant five more points back to Kazuka. Sadly, Brother Dogoth loses some of his oil, and he only has three uses left to make it back to the ruins. At this point, I need to know, can the demon charge Brother Dogoth? I will consult the oracle on a d6. And that's a three, yes but. As the demon charges, he falls into a pit, so he can't make it this turn. Clawed hands reach up across the rim, and he spends his time climbing his way out. So Brother Dogoth assesses the best outcome is to turn and run. He panics for a brief moment before he screams. So what's going on around me? I'm just like, because I just woke from the dead. Uh, the, the demon hunter you don't like is protecting us by killing the demon. I don't think she's as bad as you think she is, but you need to rest. I'm going to try to protect you and heal you. I'm going to rub the mud I had put on my scar off so he could he could see it. And I'm going to say, don't make me add another scar to my face. <laughs> That's it. And then I'm going to run. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the monk must roll a 12 or higher as he insults the demon. And he rolls a 13, success. He ducks just in time before a clawed blade swings quickly over his head. He runs and arrives safely to the shelter. However, Kazuka has no more protection from the oil. He has an angry demon looking down upon him and Brother Dogoth running to safety. Kazuka only has one point of energia left. That means if he casts a spell, he falls vulnerable to the ground and cannot defend himself. So he decides to stay where he is at and pray for a miracle. He's gonna need a 15 or higher for Mylon to hear him. Sadly, no, he rolls a two. The rock music fades in the background. 
the ugly, green-eyed gorilla demon with armadillo scales and lobster claws is going to make two slashes at him. Kazuka dodges twice with his narrow escape, plus one. He rolls an eight and takes six points of damage as he is slashed across the chest. He falls to the ground, head striking the desert floor. Kazuka then cranes his eyes over to the side and he sees Dagonia, Juan, and Brother Dogoth safely in the shelter. As Kazuka looks beyond the demon, suddenly he sees a white dove pierce through the acid clouds. The sound of the demon's laughter cackles loudly throughout the desert. The pounding of its chest echoes in Kazuka's ear. As he keeps his eyes fixed upon this dove, the demon then brings down a lobster claw as a second attack upon Kazuka's vulnerable body and slashes him open. His body flinches one last time and then his eyes close. Brother Dogoth, panting one hand, steadying himself against the wall, looks back just in time for Kazuka's body to fall still. The monk's lips mutter and stutter in fervent prayers for mercy from Duvana. The frog woman, Juan, pops her head from Dagonia's steaming cloak. She croaks in fury, covers her body once again with the cloak, and rushes back into the fray. The acid rain splashes against her, protecting her body. She runs with all her might. She slides under the demon during its victory chain. Reaching into her satchel, she snatches forth the fish and holds it close to her face and whispers in an unholy language. And I say, I thank you for your sacrifice. And then she places the creature on Kazuka's carved body and invokes the use of her knowledge of the dark powers to cast Revivify. Dagonia sees the demon standing. In anger, she turns back with her knife brandish. Brother Dogoth hears the voice of his goddess, and he answers with all his heart. Below the demon's shadow, the druid's eyes go black, and she calls upon the spirit of undeath. Swirling gray and purple mist creates a ritualistic barrier around the two. The slimy-legged fish slithers out of Juan's hands and deep into Kazuka's wounds, sewing and stitching up the body back together. With a scream, Dagonia leaps into the air and stabs the demon on the back. She must roll a nine or higher. Oh, she rolls a two. No, the demon slaps her midair and deals six points of damage to her. She slams into the ground with one hit point left. Brother Dogoth sees the poor slithering fish die, sacrificed to bring Kazuka back to life through this dark magic. As a druid, Juan must roll a 12 or higher on a nature check to cast this spell successfully. This is it. <laughs> she rolls a five. Because she tampers with dark magic, Juan immediately gains five trauma points. The spell goes awry and Kazuka's body does not return to life. But the creature does not give up. It slithers through his veins, deep within his body, out through his eyes and mouth. Instead of revivifying the bard, it turns him into a creature of undeath, an animated corpse. The demon laughs at this mishap. Brother Dogoth stares with bright blue eyes. He grits his teeth at this grisly scene. Duvana, bless us. He brings forth his katana from behind his back. Its steel glistens in the sunlight, peeking through the dark clouds. He sees his friend, or what once was his friend, now becoming an abomination. He knows what he must do. While this undead creature is still vulnerable, he aims to slay it. He must only roll a two or higher. And he rolls a five. It's funny how this time, a five is successful. With a whirling dervish, the head rolls across the plains, and the undead creature slumps down, lifeless and still. The frogwoman druid, now furious, 
made this sacrifice of an innocent creature, dipping into dark and forbidden magic. With total regret and blind fury, she turns to the monk, opens her mouth, and strikes out at him with her tongue. She must roll a 12 or higher. And she rolls a 17. She's going to do 2d4 for her damage using her boxer feature. But I must ask, can Brother Dogoth defend? Normally, I don't allow player-to-player -player violence, but this was a powerful scene. I decided they will compete 2d4 versus 2d4. They both rolled a 4, so I rule Brother Dogoth quickly dodges to the side and safely parries off Juan's tongue attack. Because of that amazing role-playing scene, Juan earns a luck point. Over off to the side, Dagonia raises up her weary body from the desert floor. She drags herself to stand despite the shooting pain in her leg. She rushes at the demon one last time. Oh, she rolls a 16 and she does only, oh, only two points of damage. Four points left to go. The demon is still standing. The demon gets its chance to retaliate. I'm gonna rule on a one or two, it strikes one. Three or four, Brother Dogoth. Five or six, Dagonia. And it rolls a one. It turns to this strange druid, casting the dark magic. Maybe it senses some sort of kinship. Maybe it's just sensing some sort of competition. Either way, the demon attacks. On a nine or higher, but Juan must hop out of the way. <laughs> she rolls a natural one. Well, wait, but she has a luck point. And not a moment too soon, she is able to spend it. And a 14 is a success. Way to go, Juan. She safely hopped out of the way. And now within reach of the demon stands Brother Dogoth. And the monk, now experiencing anger, raises his katana. He aims to completely dismember this demon once and for all. He must roll a nine or higher. He rolls a 12. He slashes the demon's scaly skin. Now I'm rolling a d6 for damage. And he rolls a four on the dice. The katana sings through the air as the monk leaps and slashes fervently across the neck. The head goes sailing into the sky until it slams on the ground, rolls for a brief moment, and then falls behind a crater, plopping in the bubbling purple ooze. The demon's body stands there for a second and then falls to the ground, defeated. Combat is over. Juan. Kazuka lies there. What once was Kazuka. You see Dagonia huffing and puffing over the dead body of the demon that is already starting to decay and turn into a crispy mess. Brother Dogoth just claimed this kill. How do you respond during this time, considering the acid rain is starting to fall all around you, and you know you're going to have to dodge it on your way back to the ruins, even as we speak? So I was so angry before from having, you know, my sacrifice of, of dipping into these dark energies that I, I never wanted to see myself doing. Um, and the, the red is starting to fade from my, my vision and I, and I realize what I've done. And so I, I take a couple of little hops over to, to Brother Dogoth. And I, and I put my webbed feet down on the ground and I prostrate myself before him and say, my friend, I am so sorry. I lost myself for a moment. I should never have attacked you. I am deeply sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, I forgive you. You were trying to help my dear friend Kazuka live on and tell stories in the afterlife. I must get out of this acid rain. I'm I'm afraid that the oil on my skin and clothing has has expired, but as uh, when we are able, is there some ritual 
or rites that you know that Kazuka would prefer uh, we perform in his honor. If you would take a moment to describe what Kazuka's people would do, for I think that everyone, especially someone like Dagonia and Brother Dogoth, would know what Kazuka's people, the Tithernans, how they ceremonially bury their dead. Take it away. Uh, but typically, uh, bards and lore masters specifically uh, are buried in ceremonial clothes um, in a very dry. Uh, you have to carry me to my temple, actually. Um, I don't know if you can do that from here. Uh, so if you're going to leave my body here, you need to dispose because you decapitated me, throw me in the crater, and let whatever's down there eat me alive. Otherwise, you got to take me back to my temple. Um, Milan's temple uh, in the nearest city, which is not even close to here. Yeah, the nearest temple to Milan would be in Tetherna, the capital, a great amphitheater of entertainment. Dagonia and Brother Dogoth, you would know in response to Juan's question, no, there's nothing you can do that would be appropriate in this God's forsaken place. Dagonia, how do you respond? We can take him because it's just not possible. I would, you know, just out of respect, I take my clo cloak off again because I'm using this all the time and I just cover him with my cloak. And Dagonia, as the acid rain starts pouring all around you in the background, the lightning cracking, suddenly the clouds start to disperse as you lay the cloak over the body of Kazuka. And he does look more respectful there. The lore master, the bard who never got to see what was inside the book that he wanted to see. But he died facing his demon, ensuring the protection of his friend, holding back the forces of the malignancy so that Ubi could find her daughter. And there he lays in firewater desolation As the three of you move on to the safety of the ruins that you sought before, the clouds have now parted and the desolation becoming increasingly hot. For now, the howls of the demons have ceased. Though your wounds, you are weary. You make a small camp, shoring up your defenses your backs against these ruined walls, what once was the castle of Firewater City. Looking beyond in this horrible place to find Sasha, you have to go through the petrified forest, which is next. And Juan, as you look on, you wonder if you'll ever find this relic, which connects you to the Union, and hopefully connects you to your people. But after the trauma you received today, is it possible that you'll ever be connected ever again? Only time will tell. And so for now, our story concludes. Every story comes to an ending, so for now, we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded, and we look forward to continuing this adventure. Background music and ambiance provided by Tabletop Audio. Find them at www.tabletopaudio.com. For more information on becoming a game master or player at your table, visit www.sojournersawake.com. And wherever you sojourn, however far or near, as always, may your story continue. That was not your fault. What? Read the chat. <laughs> anyway, so we got a really cool storyteller here. He's getting going off left field. Anyway.